All right, welcome to the Casual Esports Amateur League match of the week. We got Kamikaze Penguins versus Anarchy Blue in the Piltover Division. My name's Uila Polina, sitting here at Seal Headquarters with Vision Lord, and we'll be your casters. Um, so we're just waiting for the pro draft to start right now. But looking forward to it pretty intense Piltover game. How you doing today, Vision Lord? I'm well, my friend. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well myself. I'm very interested in the Piltover division. Yeah, it's an interesting division we have going on here. Curious to see what these two teams have for us today. For sure. I mean, we were talking a bit before about possibly an Ivern pick coming out by Anarchy Blue. I mean, it doesn't get more exciting than that, really. Some classic Ivern jungling. <laughs> Not very strong right now, but... I mean, if they want to be, like, really hypey, they could go Ivern mid with a Rengar jungle and try and do what Bjergsen and Dardak did in, uh... The Chinese and uh, Korean servers when they were boot camping there in the preseason. That's nuts. I did not hear about that. Really? So, <laughs> so Rengar just comes and ganks constantly. <laughs> yeah, and then Ivan just drops a br bush on him and he just keeps jumping. <laughs> That's genius, actually. <laughs> it really is. Surprised it only uh, caught on until the it hasn't caught on until this season. Yeah, I mean. That's probably what a lot of people think of first when you drop a champ that can make its own bushes. Like, when Ocean Drake, the new Ocean Soul map spawned, or started, everyone's saying, oh, now Rengar's gonna be broken. And I didn't really think of Ivern with Rengar. And I've played Ivern. It's kinda weird. Oh, we're actually getting into the bans. Here, I... Anarchy Blue. Not banning anyone. Odd. It goes over to Kamikaze. Penguins. The Shen ban targeting the top lane. And what do you think of Shen right now? Uh. Honestly, I haven't seen much of him, so can't really like talk about him. But I mean, in like pro, I could see him being like a strong pick given his well, given the fact that he. Can, once he gets six, he can just alt into a fight and save someone. But yeah, I don't really know too much about the champion's current state. Yeah, insane map pressure for sure. I ask because in my solo queue games, he's pretty broken. He has a pretty good early game right now. I think he got a recent buff. Is and Anarchy Blue like potentially off. just not banning? Yeah, so... Um, yeah, yeah, Anarchy Blue have a sub in, I believe, and have lost three bands for both uh, Game 1 and Game okay. 2. Did not know that going into the pro draft, but... Did not know that either. Yeah, <laughs> but but here we are. They won't be able to ban the first three. Kind of giving it over to Kamikaze Penguins to pick their favorite best champs, whoever... That's for us losing three bands. Really lets your opponent get comfortable and make the Yeah. Part of the whole point of bands is to limit it is to specifically target down a player and to give your team an advantage and when you lose three bands you can't do that very well. And in kamikaze penguins. Ah got some crazy kids on their roster. The Senna Senna. pick coming out. I'm expecting That's an that interesting for, pick. Uh, KO. He's been putting a lot of uh, solo queue games on the champion recently, so I'd expect that to go bot lane. Okay, so you're saying AD and not support. Yeah. Okay, okay. We'll see what the penguins respond with. We got about a second left here. Leona. Leona. I wonder if they're going to show the bot lane or maybe the chance to pick a mid laner let's see who they bring out for their second pick 
Oh, the jungle pick, Zach. It's already a lot of CC coming out, a lot of engage. A lot of good engage. Yeah. That's... Oh man, Zach's broken too. I swear, Zach. Oh no. Bro, if they bring out Sejuani, that's gonna be crazy. You see Sejuani got the buff? I did. Not a huge buff, but in 10.3, attack speed was buff 10% at level 1. Kind of making her more viable. And are they going to go with Gangplank in the top lane, maybe? Ah, there's still 15 seconds left. They could pick something else. They could. Ooh. Oh, they do go with GP. Blind pick Gangplank. Let's see Pretty what Pretty safe have. pick. I wonder if we'll yeah, see some LCS Soraka coming out. <laughs> or uh, Aatrox, if you uh, watch the 100 Thieves Team Liquid game. I did not. Oh. Man, I've been watching some LCS, some LEC. And um, and yeah, we see the Silas ban, or Silas pick coming out. We'll see who they ban, but going back to the the LEC and LCS. Every game has Soraka, and now the chat is getting furious, <laughs> where they're like, please ban Soraka this game. Or it's like, uh, in the chat you see them write, uh, spam this Kappa to ban Soraka. <laughs> Man, I love I it so much. I haven't seen that, actually. <laughs> yeah. I don't really watch LEC, though. Oh, jeez. I'm up pretty early and I catch a lot of LEC games. Gotcha. So then LCS. <laughs> but yeah, back to the <laughs> picks and bands. Jinx Orn. Looks like it's going to be it for Anarchy Blue. Kimikaze Penguins banning the Thresh and the Rise. So here they have left to pick their AD and their top laner, probably. Yeah, and AD Silas top. Can go top. This is looking like the AD pick. Over to Anarchy Blue. Um, they will have to make their two picks here, letting the Penguins get um, the counter pick in the top lane, even though they already have it. Strange. Well, yeah, we don't have Senna. Senna could go support. More likely, like you said, gonna be on on KO2. Ari? Okay, Ari into Silas. Uh, I guess that kind of makes sense given her... Well, I'm not sure. I assume her charm can stop uh, Silas's um, chains. Uh, not 100% sure. I don't know so about that interaction. Expected to be support. Nautilus. Okay, uh, tanky support. It's gonna be a lot of action in the bot lane. From what it looks like. Nautilus, Leona. Leona did get some nerfs this uh this patch. Yeah. I think she has reduced damage on some of her abilities. I guess Riot didn't like the damage output she was able to bring. Oh! Hold up. Is this it looks just like, on a top? It looks like it might be. That's kind of nuts. I like that. I mean, like, when they picked it, I thought it might be that, but I'm like, no, it's probably just ADC. I like that a lot. It, it makes sense. They have a lot of melee champs already with Leona, Zack, and Silas. To the point that Caitlyn would have been their only ranged champion. But this gives them some versatility. I like this. That's, that's an interesting pick. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen Tristana top in a while. Last time I saw it, it was last season when Tristana mid was a thing. It's a good pick. You have the double ADC threat with... And then you have Silas, so good AP. Yeah. Uh, There's some pretty solid comps coming out. Yeah. 
they're both looking for team fights. I looking at it. I like Anarchy Blues comp more. Right off the bat. I like the Sejuanian gangplank. I think there's a lot of synergy there. That's a good word. Um, a lot of synergy with their ultimates. And Ari. Probably the oddball in the comp, but her mobility will help with all the CC that uh, the I mean, I like, penguins can I'm bring I'm more of a fan of the uh, Kamikaze Penguin. Because okay. especially when like you get, well, I think that I like the engage from Leona and Zach better than I do Sejuani, Sejuani and Nautilus. Um, but it's more, uh, you have the DPS from Trisana and Caitlyn, so in those like late game barons, you can really melt it down. Where teams with Senna like aren't really known for being able to rush down a baron. And then you don't really have like good DPS with like the Ari or the Gangplank, so yeah, I'm favoring Kamikaze this game. I see. That's a good point. But I do like the Gangplank pick. But I think the Penguins did good to draft Tristana into a Gangplank. It's just a lane bully right now. You rush well, it's a lane bully, and then uh, with her ranged autos, it makes it easier to uh, attack his barrels so he can't do any of his uh, combos to clear the wave. Yeah. Gangplank really going to be put to the test. Silas in the mid lane. We'll see how that charm works with the chains coming out. I'm gonna say the junglers are probably just gonna full clear from what it seems. This could be a very slow game at the beginning. I would not be surprised to see very little happening until Drake spawn. Uh, I'd probably say wait until six. At least uh, that's probably when uh, uh, the Sejuani will probably look to gank. Uh, Zach, I'm not too sure. Uh, he could gank at 6, but I could see him ganking earlier due to uh, the range of his E. But I'm not too sure. I'm not all from. I'm not all that familiar with junglers and jungle clears. So <laughs> true. I'm blind. I've been jungling a fair bit. And, and yeah, Zaxi doesn't get that range it's known for till probably level 7. I mean, level 5, you have it up to 3 tier, and it's pretty far. And you hit 7, and you can jump from like Raptors to mid lane. And it's, a, it's just a good time on Zach. Sejuani? I don't think I even own Sejuani. I've never really? played that champion. Yeah. She's fun. I mean, I don't really play her a lot, but she's a fun champ to play. Especially when you hit that, uh, her ultimate. And you just, like, freeze someone for, I don't know, for a couple seconds. It's just like, ah. Oh, nice. feel great. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a hard ultimate to hit. Whenever I face a Zidjuani, they like, they're always whiffing it. I'm just kind of like rough. <laughs> uh, it depends. I feel it. I wouldn't say it's a hard ultimate to hit. More, it's very important. Uh, worry like your prediction on predicting like the enemy movement. True, might be better hit off the stun. I mean, yeah. has good a uh, good setup for that sort of Senna. Could see a bot gank early. Not early, but once the uh, Sichuan gets to level 6. Just to interact with the chat a bit. Get, um, let's see, Ansem571 pointing out Anarchy Blue needs to 2 0 Kamikaze Penguins tonight for their playoff hopes. Will they do it? 
This is the comp they've selected. Oh, we now see the summoner spells. I don't know if we could see that before. See, pretty much even all across uh, the board. Yeah, it's an exact mirror. Teleport top, ignite on mid and support, and then heal on ADCs. Yeah, exactly mirrored. So nothing crazy coming out. No Ari with TP. Not that that's crazy, but we'll see. Yeah, I think I got kill pressure coming. for sure. Summoner spell. Yeah, both running ignite on the supports and not exhaust. That's interesting. If there's no really burst damage on any team. No assassins or anything like that to worry about. I mean, Ari and uh, New Silas are kind of assassins, especially like Silas. I think they added. Was it? I think it was like 1.2 AP ratio in his full combo. Jeez. So like in his uh, so when we get towards like the late game, like he'll definitely be able to one shot the Ari or the Senna. I'd be interested. I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be a pretty like farm lane, at least from like mid jungle and top for the first couple levels. Uh, bot lane could be interesting with the Caitlyn and Leona, two like more lane dominant, aggressive champions. Um, yeah, I'm not really too sure. I don't know, but like you have the Senna heal and her like range with her Q, so not sure how the lane will go. I would definitely expect the Kaylee and Leona to have a lot of forward pressure in the lane. Yeah, I think so. And Kaylin's super lane bully has the range on Senna until she gets her her stacks, ghouls. I don't know what they're called. The the things that are that she spawns and collects. But yeah, early game. Giving it bot lane to the the penguins. I think Ari should have priority mid. With her range, she should be able to bully outside list. Top prio probably goes to Tristana. I don't know these matchups too well. But... <laughs> Same. Uh, we're getting into the game. Finally. Let's see what Anarchy Blue brings out. They could look for an invade. Both teams could look for an invade. That'd be some fun. That'd be, a spi that'd be spicy. Some I would very match. much enjoy that. Same here. And right off the bat, can we... We see the skin selection. There it is. A lot of pool party coming out. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's quality. I like the icons that the Anarchy Blue bring out here. They got some uh, some matching icons with the jungle mid and AD. Take and we're on Summoner's Rift. Game's about to start. And the game has been paused. All right. You can look at runes. Wait, no. It's, I don't know. Oh they no, they resumed it. All right, we're back in. It. So, yeah, so the subs coming out from Anarchy uh, Blue. We see top laner solo Jebs. Unable to make it. Instead, Shaka Zulu taking his place. And it looks like a sub in the jungle too. Um, Hypnotic Samuel coming out for Penguin or Penguin Jack coming in for Hypnotic Samuel. <laughs> okay, we see the penguins posted up in the river. Meanwhile, Anarchy Blue has decided to take over the. Uh... 
blue buff. It's how good you look. They, they leave a war. Oh, they don't know the Kamikaze penguins are here. Like Will anything happen? Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately oh, I'm weak. Nothing. Okay. Kamikaze penguins decide not to show their location. I wonder if they know it's warded. They should figure it is, but... Uh, they would probably... They probably know, but... Who knows? I think they did, because we see a... Ace of in the top lane. Come out and ward the blue. So both junglers starting bot lane. Well, maybe see them clash in the top lane for a gank, but both these top laners have easy escapes. Yeah, Gangplank GP has the orange and Tristana with the rocket jump. Yeah. jump scurvy. My bad. Oh, good. Penguin Jack rushing straight to red. Might try to go for an early or, or straight to blue. Might be looking for a top lane gank. Penguins do ping it, they know he's top lane. Oh. Bot lane, the root comes out. I'm loving the aggression. Yeah, okay, the so. Two abuse. Yeah, that's. Anarchy blue. Sorry. Gets a level too early. Full send yearly, pops the ignite. And trades it for Sengencia's heal. Ari lands a charm on man's deferred. Not much. Doesn't know Sichuan is here. Gonna escape with the Epscond. Which is the first part of his E. In the top lane, Shakazulu winning some trades. A lot of action so far. You can see Zach in the top lane. Oh, the Regan coming out of mid lane. Penguin Jack. Can hit the charm? First blood. And that's how it looks with the chains and the charm, man. That's nuts. It does interrupt it. Do you see that? I did. That was very well played by Penguin Jack to come in for the repeat gank and Ari landing the ch charm. Really sealed in. Yeah, I gotta wonder what Man's Defer was thinking trying to land that stun there. He was almost out and. Gets one back in thinking he could get him under tower. Oh, but in the top lane. Zack is just gonna last it for shot away. Yeah, pretty. I think it was gang fucking with Jack early. Not what I expected at all. I thought we'd see full clears. Dude, we got a call out always gonna gain here. Not clearing his gromp on the first clear. I think big mistake. Lost a lot of gold and XP with that. And, uh, should always clear gromp. Gromp's very important. The top lane Chaka Zulu just gets away. Yeah, things have kind of lulled out here after that aggressive trembling. Wow. For sure, things coming down. Jungler's both farming, looks like. He's just picking up CS. I'd like to note, Manthew Frick didn't lose any summoners to the Penguin Jack trades. Which hopefully will help him in this next gank by full send yearly. Oh, the charm just misses. Yeah, I would expect him to uh, really take advantage of the ignite, especially when uh, he gets level 6. Just all in the Ari and try and 1v1 R. Yeah, we've already, or we're already seeing a 1k gold lead. 
coming out on a... Oh, the gank comes in, elastic slingshot by Zack. And they lock it down. Flash used by full send daily, but it was not enough. Wow, that's a great gank, but always gonna gain. Through the flash. anti frick does use the ignite. And uh, able to get a little payback in the mid lane. That actually has the gold lead. Oh, always gonna gain. Might be caught out here. We'll send yearly locks it down. And the Zack passive is gonna be spawned here. Oh, but then they get full send yearly and Penguin Jack on the second go in. KO2 looking for some more. Finds Beast with the root. Mancy Ferg does not have ultimate. Oh, nice flash by KO2. And he, wait, Mancy Ferg's gonna go in again. It's not over yet. Only one minion left to tank the tower. I might say this gank's over. I think Full Saint Yearly's back in lane. A lot of summoners used. Only Penguin Jack and Chuck Zulu with their flash left on the Anarchy Blue. Making use of his kit, just tanking both of those buffs at the same time. Able to hit them at the same time with his stretching strikes and his unstable matter. Stretching strikes, able to stun them together, and unstable matter just the next W. Oh, fight breaks down the bot lane. Always gonna gain. Will he die to the ignite? Leona looking for more on KO2. He's just gonna pick up his cell divisions. I not know it was called cell division. I'm cousin penguins setting up the ocean break. They are pretty low. They did just get full sand yearly. It's like um, energy blue might trade this for. For uh, the Rift Herald. For Shelly in the top lane. The Shellster. See if they can get some early plate gold. The hook just misses in the bot lane. Super close. Already seen a huge gold lead in the top lane. Already 1k just off farm by Shaka Zulu over Ace of. That's nuts. Well, that's the uh, 40 uh, CS lead he has over Ace of, in addition to the additional gold he gets from, uh, I think it's his passive. Whenever oh, yeah. he uh, Qs or uh, kills minions with a barrel. Yeah, you're right. A lot of gold on Shaka Zulu right now. Caitlyn though is the one to kill right now. Since she's here with the 150 gold bounty already. Picking up gold off those two ganks. Nicely well done. Well played by Asa. Canceling two of GP's barrels. Oh, Asa Rocket jumps back in looking for more. Hold up, the cannon barrage comes out by Shaka Zulu. Both alts burned by top lane. Yeah, nothing. No result though. They're both playing pretty safely. They know they won't get much general intervention. It's being a, a more bot lane meta. Shaka 
Shaka Zulu sitting on 2k gold. No doubt waiting to back and spend it. Does he have enough for a uh, Triforce? I'm assuming that's what he would buy. No, not Triforce quite. is 3,700. See it now. I don't think he has enough. Oh, fight breaks out in the mid lane. Penguin Jack lands the ultimate. And Man's Defer goes down. Dale has yet to use his flash. Probably not the best time to use it there, but... Real shame. But Penguin Jack... Brings out the Shellster in the mid lane. Looking for those tower stacks. Always in a game trying to do something about it. Might full send daily, full send daily going down quickly. The Leona ult comes out. He's gonna tower dive. He does have his passive up. Penguin Jack should be able to make quick work of it. A one for one in the mid lane, full send daily. We're always gonna gain. Both flash is burned. Penguin Jack just gonna take a re -tall. I mean, as the gold lead is growing, you see Caitlyn already lost. Oh, a fight breaks out in the bot lane. Full send yearly ulted by his own ultimate. Kind of weird. Um, Deferred coming out. And they'll pick up the double kill of the bot lane. So that's Silas dealing. Nautilus is ultimate and then using it on him to knock them both up. Kinda unfortunate the flashed there. He ended up flashing on KO2. Yeah, K also did a uh, poor job. KO uh, didn't drop a uh, turret aggro earlier, so he ended up taking a. Uh, well, I think it was like two turret shots, one of which was he could have avoided had he just like stepped back a little further. Yeah, that's never good. Just, uh, just, just like not knowing the turret range, trying to get out. Tristana yeah. like might have just saved gangplank. He saved saved gangplank in the top lane with the buster shot. Definitely yeah. not the intention there. And Shaka Zulu not respecting that all he's gonna game could still be around. At the same time, a fight breaking on the bot lane. Double ultimate by Penguin Jack. Silas healing so much off full send daily. But they're able to pick up the kill. See if Shaka Zulu can keep this in 0-2. Is that gonna come in? Charmed under tower. Ace of tanking for him. Oh no. What a mess. Anarchy Blue able to pick up four kills for none. And they're just gonna go straight to the Cloud Drake. Very well played by a uh, full sun daily there. Able to just constantly land those charms throughout that fight. Really uh stopped uh Kamikaze from doing as much damage as they could have. Could have turned the fight potentially. Yeah, I mean that was a super close fight. Both in the top lane. Shaka Zulu was at less than 10% almost the whole time he was running away. And, I mean, Mansi Ferg had already super low, but just didn't pan out. And that 1k gold lead is now a 3k gold lead at the 15 minute mark. I mean, that's just plate gold and the farm difference that you're seeing. Even though the kills are 8-7, this gold is not, not the same. It's not as even as you would think just by looking at the scoreboard. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Um, all flash is burned. On both teams. We'll see gangs start to hit a lot harder right now. The ultimate comes out by Leona. Oh, and they just... They pick off Santa. Uh, with the solar flare. 
Silas Steel's game playing so ultimate. And as that all happened in the bot lane, we see Anarchy Blue actually picking off Silas, not respecting the vision or the lack of vision in the river as they pick up a second Shellster. Looking to drop a top lane on Acer. On the Tristana, oh, the charm comes out, misses. And meanwhile, Kamikaze Penguins looking to take down the tier 2 bot tower. Here comes out the Shellster in the top lane. Ari backing. Silas running back top. Oh, actually, Penguin Jack hits the Glacial Prison on Tristana, but Tristana gets out okay with the rocket jump. Finally, Zach has made his way into the top lane. Will they look for more here? Leon is trailing behind, probably won't make it to the fight. Ari goes in, misses the charm, hits everything else. Last well, night, not, not enough to run down Silas. Oh, Zach, last excellent shot, same caught by the charm. It's also not enough. Uh, super sad for Anarchy Blue there. But, but pretty great for Kamikaze Penguins. Are about to hit the 18 minute mark. The gold lead still increasing by Anarchy Blue. Now at a 4,000 gold lead for 20 minutes. One Cloud Drake keeping their ultimates on low cooldown. What do you think of the Cloud Drake? Like that single Drake versus Ocean Drake? To me, it's the most broken thing. The 10% ultimate cooldown reduction is so much more valuable than Ocean Dragons healing 2.5% of missing health. Uh, yeah, I'd agree, especially since it's uh, not a uh, CDR capped. It's not capped by the CDR. So if you have 40% CDR and then you have an Ocean Drake, it, your ultimate is on a 50% cooldown. Um, yeah, the two and a half uh, health healing from Ocean isn't really like noticeable, but then again, like it's also like I feel like it's a little underestimated because it's something you don't really notice unless you have like two, three, four of them. Yeah, I really don't notice it. Yeah, to your point, maybe it's because uh, all of a sudden just living longer. I mean, that 2.5 missing health might have saved Silas and Zack in that last fight. See a team fight break out. Out of the hooks. Leona. Oh, the Zack ultimate comes out, knocks up everyone. Down goes Tristana. Everyone's still alive on, F on Anarchy Blue. Silas dies. They get Ari in the process. Stuff's happening way too fast. But uh, Leona goes down, Caitlyn goes down, Silas goes down, Tristana goes down on Kamikaze Pink with the so four for one, and they'll pick up the dragon. And the gold lead is now 5k at the 20 minute mark. Man, I don't know how LCS casters do it. That's just uh, insane. <laughs> I would say it's a. Uh... <laughs> 10 years, well, 8 plus years of casting is what they have on us, my friend. Fair enough. Just everything happening at once there. So. Yeah, it's a lot to take in and talk about. Pretty crazy team fight. Zach did, I mean, exceptionally well. Hit everyone with his let's bounce, but it was not enough. Like, they could not bring out the damage for that tanky. Sejuani front line, and, and that was the fight. 
I'd also like to note, Caitlyn did get separated by Nautilus in that fight. And yeah, she ended she... up having to pass around, I think. Just completely zoned, right? Yeah, she got was uh, on, more towards like mid lane at the start of the fight, and then when she had to flash over the wall to get with the rest of her team. But then um, Anarchy Blue just showed up and just killed her. At least like yeah. while the fire was going on. That's a big problem. Kaylin is, I guess, the carry right now. She does have most of their gold sitting at 8,000. Next highest on. Oh, actually, that goes in. Last six slingshots. Gonna bring out KO2's flash. KO2 trying to respond. Here comes Silas. Does have his chains up. Ooh, stop watches. The Ari charm. Good. Good stopwatch. Yeah. He definitely would have died had he not stopwatched and let Chari. Are you gonna find Caitlyn? Fennel brings her down. Ultimate comes out by Nautilus. Not enough to pick off anyone else. Here comes Ari. Lands a charm on Zach. Oh my goodness. Ari's landing everything today. Nautilus just tanking, hoping that they can get the Zack, but now the passive was too much. Cell Division saving Zack there. Here they go, Siege in the tier 2, mid lane turret. Penguin check. On the Sejuani. Does end up using the Glacial Prison, but it does not connect. It just loads him. Yeah, Caitlyn is back on the map. Um, not the longest death timer. And Gangplank running into Zack. In the blue side jungle. But they'll just say hello. Exchange a little, <laughs> little mini trade. Go on their way. So actually, I'd like to point out, Leona has accumulated more gold than Tristana in the top lane. Don't know how, but 100% uh, factual. Uh, two gold. Sorry, two more kills and four more and three more assists. That's all it. You think? 70 CS would be enough. I mean, clearly it isn't, but. Well, I mean, I think it's like, what, like 15 to 20 CS is worth approximately a kill. So. So it's like 40 CS, and then. I'm not 100% familiar with the. Uh, how assist gold works. Yeah, you're right. Part of it it's also just strange just... to look at, you know? Yeah, part of it also could just be maybe one of the kills was a shutdown. True, a lot of shutdowns coming out. I mean, Penguin Jack sitting on 500 gold shutdown at the 25 minute mark. That's kind of nuts. Yeah, he's done an excellent job, just... Comes the up. Penguin Jack, Glacial Prison. The Jinx here gonna flash. Gonna use the caliber net to escape. Not enough. Wow. Did great to dodge everything. Just. It wasn't enough. Penguin Jack also used his flash. And Shaka Zulu eventually caught up. And. Shut down the Caitlyn. Look straight towards Baron. Both junglers are level 12. It's a pretty even smite fight. Neither one has a clear execute. Oh, but they're just looking to turn. Anarchy Blue. Divided among targets. They find Tristana. In the back, they find Zack. Both going down. Eventually pick off the Silas. Now they turn the sights towards Leona. Not quite the ace. Is. 
and they look right towards Baron again, you'll probably get it because I'm talking about the penguins, they're all dead. That was actually this really smart what Absolute Blue, sorry, Anarch Blue did. Uh, instead of just trying to like force the Baron, they took advantage of their uh, man advantage and took the 5v4. Because they really didn't have to fort, they didn't have to rush down the Baron, so yeah. They did the smart thing by just kind of like starting in, force Kamikaze Penguin to respond and then just fight them instead of take the Baron. Yeah, great on them, taking their time with it. I mean, as you said, they do not burst Baron down, like, <laughs> at all. I think Kamikaze Penguins look dead. Play 25 seconds on their respawn timers. It took Anarchy Blue a good 40 to burn down the Baron. Okay, Kamikaze Penguins looking to get the dragon out of this. Delay the soul. Saying the game's not over yet. I mean, good for them. Taking uh, advantage of the fact that uh, Anarchy just uh, just base and reset the map, so you gotta take all that you can while you can. And for sure, great on them. It's a huge gold lead. High Anarchy Blue and uh. Oh, Kazi Penguins just have to hope to hang in there. Uh, get some gold on their carries. Here comes Zag, brings in the elastic slingshot. CC for the first three seconds of being in there. They're still looking, they'll get the Leona. Zag's pretty low, we'll have to run back to the mountain. And it's held. Nautilus looking for Silas. Doesn't find him. Here they go, very methodic. Gonna bring down the mid and bot inhibitor turrets. Take down the inhibitors. Okay, Zach does find a flank. Goes in. Not sure. Communication was there. Kamikaze Penguins was not ready to go in. Yeah, I'd, I'd expect. Here we go. Real methodic. Not even gonna try to follow these all the abilities out. Anarchy Blue still alive. No, not always goes down. Zach and Caitlyn down for Kamikaze Penguins. Silas gonna steal the ultimate. Oh, but the Nexus goes down. And Anarchy Blue! Season is still alive! Pretty exciting game. Wow, that was a very dominant performance, shutting it out 29 minutes. So, do you think... What was the what was the straw that broke the camel's back there? Um hmm. We got back to you. We can't look at some of these charts. I mean we got gold charts. You saw the damage charts. Huge. Huge, huge. You can see Gangplank, Ari leading. I mean, almost doubling the rest of the team's damage. Which is what you'd expect. Senna and Sejuani bringing out a lot of CC, a lot of healing. So Nautilus. And, and yeah, Kamikaze Ping was not able to keep up. So yeah, good first game by, by both teams. Mickey Blue comes out with the win. And uh, I think we'll uh we'll take this this little let the two teams regroup and we'll come back when we're there ready for game two.
Alright fans, welcome back to game two of Kamikaze Penguins versus Anarchy Blue. See Anarchy Blue's first three bands will be uh you know they they won't be able to ban for the first three bands. Or sorry. Is that Anarchy Blue? Now I'm forgetting, yep, Anarchy Blue cannot yeah. ban uh first three B. Anarchy Blue um, lost uh, their subs because of subs. Exactly. So, uh, Kamikaze Penguins choosing to ban Gangplank, even though they did find... Or because they found that trouble with it. And also choosing to ban Illawi. So it might be target banning Shaka Zulu, saying that's the problem. Yeah. Bans seem to suggest that, like, they aren't a fan of him. Or they fear the fact that they fear him uh, just taking over a game. Yeah. In a ban. Uh, we might see another top lane ban. Da, 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 da. The Shen. Yep. Three top lane bans coming out for Kamikaze Penguins. And Absolute Blue. This will also be a no ban. And the first pick took the Kamikaze Penguins. I'm just gonna let the timer run out. Not gonna ban anyone. Here comes first pick. The Senna on the board. No doubt. A good flex pick. It can be run as support. Still more popular is AD Carry. And a lot of the AD Carries I know. Well, really, like the one guy I asked. And, uh. <laughs> and watching I'm a Cutie Pie on YouTube. They say, uh, the Senna nerfs are not noticeable. So. She's probably still gonna be played AD Carry. Nautilus picked up by Anarchy Blue. They did like that pick last game choosing to run with it again. So I wonder if they'll show bot lane here or if they'll pick jungle again. At least yep. There it is, Sichuani jungle. Up to kamikaze penguins now. Wait, they could respond with a jungler. And a support maybe and let the mid lane and top lane get counter picks again. Comes the AD carry Caitlyn. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I mean it, it did pretty well last match. Wasn't able to bring out any you know huge amounts of damage, but um, was able to lane pretty well. Oh, and the Amumu. Okay. This is actually one of Always Gonna Game's favorite champions, I think. I think he's, yeah, no, it's, I think it's his most played, uh, SEAL champion. Okay, he's okay. It five times? You bring out the classic Amumu then. Sad boy. <laughs> <laughs> and the Jin comes out for Anarchy Blue. Oh, poor guy. Took his sin away. So he will now be going on to the Jin. Horn Band comes out. The Pantheon ban coming out. More top lane bans. Wonder if Anarchy Blue made a mistake not picking their top lane there. As it will allow them to just get deeper into um, Shaka Zulu's champion pool. And maybe even put on something he's very uncomfortable with. Something he doesn't know the matchups for. Because I go to Shaka Zulu's... Oh, P.GG and it's all Shen, Pantheon, Alawi, 
And as we saw get Gangplank last match. But, uh, we'll see. His last match that isn't Pantheon or Shen is a Teemo match, actually. Could we see Teemo uh, in uh, week four of the seal? Pilt over to Potentially, um, probably would come. <laughs> we are not going to see the team. We are not going to see team. <laughs> Man, they just really don't like Shaka Zulu. So they've gone deep into Shaka Zulu's champion pool saying, we will beat you as long as he does not play any champion that he knows how to I mean, that's six top lane champions picked. <laughs> Anarchy Blue really wondering what other champions he can play. And he's, <laughs> this could be the rise top, could also be the rise mid. We'll see. Uh, I would expect it to go mid. I know that uh, Full Sun Daily has been putting in a couple games on rise recently. Okay, that does leave some some options for Shaka Zulu to go AD or AP. I and mean, that rise will put out huge AP damage. Here comes the Corky pick. Corky, okay. Mikazi Penguins. Looks like man, D Ferg is gonna play Corky mid. Hopefully not another AD carry top. I'm gonna see a Zier mid. <laughs> Zier mid would be hype. <laughs> and out comes the Swain. Okay, what is Kamikaze Penguin's comp? Uh, Caitlyn Sona, ADC, Amubu Jungle, Corky Mid, Swain Top. What if it could be Caitlyn Top, Senna Swain yeah. Bot, you Amubu, are Corky Mid. Man, my friend. Swain could be the support here. And the Lulu pick. Not too, sh not too sure on the. Oh, it's Fiora. Okay. It's Fiora. <laughs> it is not Lulu. That's just our. It's it's a pro draft bug. It yeah, is an a pro Fiora. draft. There's actually a Fiora pick in the top lane. Now, if I'm Kamikaze Penguins, I'm probably sweating. Fiora, if the other laner is skilled, like Fiora is scary. Good Fiora will really ruin your day if you run into one in solo queue. When Anarchy Blue has a good 1 3 1 setup with the Rise and uh, Fiora. So I, I'd be interested to see how well they play that, or if they can just play it like a regular like team fight te comp. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, a lot of options. Hmm. Whereas the Kamikaze Penguin's just gonna look for that team fight. Great synergy, Amumu ult, Swain ult. Good Senna Siege and Oakley, Senna, Caitlyn, and Corky. Very good Siege. I mean, four ranged champions. Just a Mumu to go in there with the bandage toss. And cry all over Anarchy Blue. <laughs> Alright, so off the the two team comps who do you think has the edge in game two uh probably uh <laughs> yeah q blue is what i'd say i mean i'd agree with you there yeah because i feel like they're all i don't know it really just depends on whether or not uh like Rise of Fiora gets ahead. Cause I think if Rise of Fiora can get ahead, they can really like push that 
one three one or like a one four and then just force uh kamikaze penguins to just constantly react to their macro um but if both of them aren't able to get ahead i could see it be a real issue for them No doubt they would. They do fall behind pretty hard. Say so rise a little easier to catch up with. But if Fiora falls behind, and not much damage is gonna come out. It's gonna get bursted. Overall, both teams have good like AP AD balance. Kamikaze Penguin's a little, bit, a little bit more damage oriented than Anarchy Blue. But they still have some good CC with uh, Senna, Mumu, and Swain. Even though Caitlyn has uh, the traps. Looking. So while the stream cannot, we can see their summoner spells. It looks like this is going to be top running TP and mid running TP. It is a Swain top. So yeah, we won't both. be seeing the Caitlyn top. No high B flex picks. Is Caitlyn's top even still a thing? They ran or Tristana or... top last game, so it can't I... be the strangest thing to see the Kamikaze Penguins do. Well, I feel like Kalen top only really was a thing when uh, people kept running it with Grasp with the Undying. Tristana was a little different because like, she can just shove the wave and then take towers well with her Q. And... Uh, What's your bomb called? Fleet footwork. It's some decent healing too. Can be ran in place of charge. the grasp of the end. Okay, and the bot lane's gonna opt for some more defensive uh, summoner spells. Caitlyn's running barrier, while Senna's running heal into Jin he with heal and Nautilus with ignite. So, uh, kind of interesting. Bot lane trying to play more safe this game. Yeah, there are some of suggests that they kind of just want to play safe, farm up, and just get through the lane and hope that, uh, that, uh, yeah, they can just, like, get to the team fight stage. And then kind of just, like, put in their work there. I mean, it's a solid plan. They did have great team fights. Zack was always able to knock up four or five members of Anarchy Blue. It was just at that point they were so behind. They had no damage to follow up on it. That may be the key here in game two for a Kamikaze Penguins to take it home. I mean, really end Anarchy Blue's playoff hopes. A lot on the line here. I wonder if they're nervous. Ah, uh, I doubt that's what they're thinking. Well, to some extent they probably are, but they're probably more focused on just doing well and trying to win. Yeah, no doubt something you think about going into the game. But whether or not they're thinking about it now. Maybe, maybe not. As soon as we get in the game, I have to wait the two minute spectator delay. Thanks, Riot. <laughs> um, we'll be able to see what runes they're running and whatnot. I mean, both of us given the edge to Anarchy Blue's comp. Seems a little easier to execute. But, um, I really like Rise as a pick. I think Rise is very strong. 
I mean, ease of execution is probably Kamikaze. Just because they just want to like group of five and then fight, <clears throat> fight um, Anarchy Blue. But I don't know, I'd say uh, just like Penguin Jack and Sejuani did a great job getting a full sun daily and Shakazulu ahead. That I think he'll be able to exert more pressure in the early game than uh, always going to game. That's gonna like let them get the Fiora and Rise ahead. Yeah, if those two get ahead, it's it's gonna be a hard game for. It'll be a hard game Kamikaze to fight back, even. but not impossible. Not Just impossible. To play a macro right and no one to no one to team fight. Sure. Penguins, Penguin Jack back on the Sejuani. Penguin Jack going up against Kamikaze Penguins. Feels weird. Why do you say that? Oh. <laughs> they both, you know. <laughs> I got feels, it. Uh, Never mind. <laughs> right, what the fans really came here, the skins in 2 1 0. Apparently we'll see a riot if the Corgi skin does not come out. <laughs> we'll see Masaki! what skins Corgi chooses to run. He does have Corgi Corgi. Okay. The fans are calm. <laughs> we have... We the Hextech really cool Swain, that's kinda hype. Yeah, dude. That's kinda <laughs> hype. I'm excited yeah. to see this. I actually haven't seen the skin before, so... Me neither. First time. Let's go. Out. The Firecracker Sejuani. Is this a different skin? Really flexing on us? Penguin Jack. This guy's a madman. Did you see that he was not running the same skin last game? Please. Flexing on the twit. What will we see? Are we gonna see the standard bush tactic again? Both teams running up the middle. See if they're just gonna run into each other. The Q lands on Corgi. All the but the Corgi punches back. The root lands on Nautilus. Gonna go down. Said Jancia picks up first blood. And Nautilus just did not think he had to flash. Always flash early. Well. Same. Yeah, I was a bit surprised Full Send early decided to go in on that. Both teams kind of looked like they uh, were just like moving away from each other, and he just decided to go all in, and it really didn't work out in his favor. Yeah. And in my gold games, it's a lot like uh, Lee Syndrome, where if you hit the Q, then you have to take it. And I kind of suffer from that, playing Lee Sin. But with Nautilus, it's like, if I can hit the Q, then I have to do it. There's no scenario where it would be bad. I mean, if you hit the Q, you don't have a choice. <laughs> no, where it's like, it's like, like if you Lee see Sin the target and you have the, it's yeah. like I must, I must hook them. I think it's just all, all hook champions have that to some degree. Where you see the open hook, you know you can probably land it. And you're like, well, <laughs> what could go wrong? Could go wrong. Oh, but what are the odds of that? What are the odds of it going wrong? KO2 gonna lose the trade, not able to get the last bullet off. Bot lane. is gonna connect. The trade going on in the top one. And Swain looking a lot more comfortable. 
picking up some CS. Got Kazulu bobbing and weaving through the minions, so. Landing in those loot marks, getting the healing. The duelist dance, acid. Oh, the sustained swain poke. He's gonna go in. Penguin Jack here in the top lane. Gonna find always gonna game. In the game. Oh, but Corky has rotated up. Shakazulu burns the flash. Anti furry. Yeah, what a. Oh, and he does. Corky flashes over the wall. Penguin Jack looking for a kill on the Swain. Not able to find it. Swain with the double kill. Rise finally gets here. Must might be too late though. And they're just gonna turn on Rise. Corky firing away. W's in. TP coming out. Swain finds the trip, unofficial triple kill in the top lane. Ace of not playing. Well, he is playing games, but not playing any games. This game. We have ourselves a series, my friend. <laughs> Indeed, we do. The Kamikaze Penguins responding. Aggressive. After a disappointing game one, <laughs> they've come back in game two with a vengeance. A <laughs> lackluster game one and two. This crazy four kills, 1.5k gold lead already. Yeah, I mean, we're four minutes in and we have a 301 Swain. Like, he's ooh. huge. He's massive right now. He is massive. Those auto attacks are. Or even doing insane damage. And he's gonna be able to get the freeze, it looks like. Yeah. Penguin Jack in the bot lane looking for a gank. The Q comes out, hits his. Penguin Jack does connect. But Senna is just being broken. Just kidding. <laughs> First of the Black Mage, able to get them out. They can get full. Oh, Dragon spawns at the Cloud Drake. Penguin Jack just does not know that a Mumu is stealing his top side. Punishing him for showing bot. And gonna go ahead and just steal his top side camps. I like that. Some good macro play, but they're always gonna get it. Get sure that Penguin Jack's. Failed gank does not go unpunished. Okay, they have wards all over the bottom side of the map. Mumus Brooks are warded. Fallen. Let's see. Swain getting a huge trade. Shock Zulu down to 50%. Mumu looking for a gank mid, doesn't know he's sitting on a ward. Rise not gonna walk up. And Mumu's just gonna back here. Not much going on on Summoner's Rift. We'll see Nautilus making his rounds, checking for any sneaky dragons. Bot lane. It's a smite. Chin flashes. The ult comes out. KO2 is slain by Sejancia. Penguin Jack looking to get a kill back on a Moo. Not able to find it though. 
Okay, we're too bad to burn all the summoners. And still went down to the gank. Great job by Kamikaze Penguins. Keep forcing stuff around the map. Growing their gold lead to 2k. Already we see Nautilus roaming mid lane. Corgi on his Corgi. Unaware of the dangers that lie in the brush. Seems like he'll be fine. As Nautilus just heads back. Rises, just gonna back. Comes a Moo Moo. Doesn't know that he's walked by the pink ward. Oh, he does know the enemy team is fishing on him now. Orky gonna back on a ward. A Moo Moo gonna find the pink ward, eh? Hey. Some vision being cleared. Or you gonna pick up the package of Moomoo trying to sneak the dragon. Penguin Jag two steps ahead does know that the dragon is vulnerable. We'll go ahead and take the shells instead. For Corky with his package looking for some action in the top lane. Walking over wards like nobody's business. Back! Well, welcome back to Vision Lord. Sorry about that, my uh, power temporarily went out. What'd I miss? You missed. An insane play in the bot lane. KO2 went down to a gank by a move. And they got Cloud Drake off of it. And Penguin Jack went ahead and took uh, the Shellster. So oh. Fiora is the one that took the eye. So the Shellster gotcha. will probably be used top lane. And uh, stay with that, you're up to date. Excellent. coming out they know Corky might be roaming but he did not able to make use of the package penguin jack looking for something in the top lane Wayne is huge however sitting on some gold Wayne will be shut down by Shaka Zulu trading the kill over to Corky. Kind of worse. Great flash by Asub initially, but I'm not too sure why. What decided? Uh, why he decided to go back in? I mean, he, he was out and he was like by himself. Like I don't know why he would elect to go back into the one v two. In the bot lane, the catch, the beef with the hook, the Jin ultimate comes out, the Jensia forced to block, does find one, oh not enough. Great dodge by Beast, being able to live there. Dodge. Comes Rise Corky, unaware that there are three members in the top lane, this is not where he should be fighting. Swain does come middle, pick up the wave before rotating top. And they find Nautilus. Overstaying is welcome. Pulse immediately goes down. Out Shelly in the top lane.
able to get three plates. I'll let find a fourth and then we'll So Fiora actually taking over the gold lead in the top lane with the shutdown and the gold plates and from the tower. Been able to get a slight edge over the Swain who did get the early advantage. However, the bot lane, Sechencia taking over again. 1k gold lead over KO2. And Amumu holding down about a 700 gold lead over Penguin Jack. And all together, they've been able to hold on to their 2k gold lead. A fight breaks out, Swan's ultimate is popped for Shakzu's ultimate. Shakzu this day, I cannot fight. This The Moo Moo. Crying all over the Nautilus. Lands the bandage toss. Senna lands the hook. Ultimate comes out. The Wombo. Oh, this seems to be a little flaw in the game right now. So while nothing's going on, I want to talk about builds here. You can see Fiora already bought the Executioners for the Swain healing. No doubt the Senate healing. Pretty good purchase. Yeah, honestly, a little surprised. It's not too often you see uh, anyone uh, go like, uh, well, Russian executioners calling. Yeah, and I mean, it's been nice. Uh, like, most people don't really get it until they're like fourth, fifth, or even like sixth item. Great point if you are just able to. Uh... To recognize that she's gonna need it.
The Shellster is in the mid lane. Sieging on the tier 2 tower. Meanwhile, a fight breaking out in the bottom lane. Kalen brings out the ultimate. Oh, a great flash by Full Sent Yearly to block it. Don't even know if it was going to kill KO2. He did use his heal. Kind of miscommunication, but better to be safe than sorry. In the top lane, Shaka Zulu. Some successful trades. He is now getting his items and able to really 1v1 the, the Swain up there. Get him past that early gold lead. Yeah, the Infernal Drake has spawned. It does seem like Kamikaze Penguins is going to give it up. As they cannot hold it down. They do have to back. Really just don't have priority for this dragon. Ooh. And there it is. First dragon. Four Anarchy Blue. Could they go for the fourth Infernal stack? Probably not, but we'll see. I mean, giving up one ocean... Ah, wow, I'm bad. <laughs> uh, giving up one Infernal Drake isn't the end of the world. It's usually when you start... It's after you start giving up, like, two or three... Is really when you, like, start noticing the damage difference. Sure really isn't. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's really just 20, 30 AD. Corky! Find off way more than he can chew. Finding Rise in the top lane flashes, uses everything. And Rise able to just. Rise able to, to kill Corky in the top lane for a. Uh, be polite. I'm not a fan of Rise's insane damage. I do think he's pretty good champion right now. I mean, that's a good sign for um, Anarchy Blue, the fact that uh, Full Send Daily is able to 1v1 Mansburg. It means that uh, if they end up setting up like a their like, split, if they end up splitting, it's a good sign for them because it means that uh, Kamikaze Penguins has to send at least two people to deal with them. It's no, it's, it is a great sign. And this is really Corky's kind of power spike. We'll see when he gets... What is he building? I don't know what he's building next. Could be rapid fire. Uh, I, I'm gonna think that it's rapid fire, but it could be PD or something like that. Oh, uh, uh, PD is a Phantom Dancer. Probably Phantom Dancer. This is what I would expect. Uh, something to help, uh... Deal with the burst the rise. Phantom Dancer does provide a nice shield. Back in the bottom lane, tensions running high. Meanwhile, the mid lane siege, and they're really just trying to bring out this last outer turret. As um, oh, rise is gonna find a move. Looks like they're looking for a fight. The ultimate comes out. And goes Swain. Caitlyn able to body block for Moomin. Then able to root them. And it looks like they'll only lose a Swain. One for nothing. Not much to be done by Anarchy Blue. We'll see if they can get their first tower of the game in the mid lane. Manti Furry is rotating over there to defend it. But they're not here. Yeah, but I would time. expect this tower to go down. It does go down. Will Matthew for go down too? No. The hook just short. Yearly only edge line. Part of uh, sending Mance's death. <laughs> Super close. I thought it was gonna hit. Clearly, uh, right. Thought differently. You know his hooks. They go just a little bit farther than they than they seem. So you can always catch it stretching out. And I thought that was gonna be one of them, but it was not. Here with the Fiori, you can really see just how far back the executioner is falling is setting her. 
Well, she's gonna have to wait another probably minute or so to get her Trinity Fourth, where if she didn't have to buy that item, she would already have it right now. True, but at the same time, if she doesn't get the Executioner's Calling, she really wouldn't be able to have any chance of 1v1 winning this way. For sure, a little sneaky Baron action. Shaka Zulu not having it. Looking for a 2v1, finds one. Santa ult comes out. Swain gonna ult right on top. Fiora and Fiora goes down. They're looking for more. Comes to explode the ultimate. The turning call comes out. Swain not able to get out of that sticky situation with Sichuani stuns. See the bot lane just recall here. No, not gonna recall. Oh no. Oh no is right. Sitting on a bunch of wards. This is really where the vision comes into play. With the catch cord, you're able to catch everyone it looks like. Sajentia make it out, Sajentia does make it out. And here comes the second Infernal. The gold lead now shifted. Wow. Anarchy Blue takes the gold lead. I mean, I think they... They were behind 3k gold at one point, if I'm not mistaken. I believe you're correct. Wow, crazy comeback from their early game. Sticking through. I mean, Rise doing what he does, scaling. Fiora scaling. And, uh, a couple bad, uh, a couple bad fights. Some players getting caught out is all it took to put this game back on even footing. Swain. 1v1ing. No, not a 1v1. Penguin Jack comes out of the jungle. And down goes it. the Swain. Ace of not able to stay alive. Porky looking for some poke. Anarchy Blue hoping to bring it home. Those who just tuned in. They do need to win this game to keep their playoff hopes alive. Oh, he's gonna game. Finally bought a sweeper. Very necessary. Oh, but now it's gonna land the dredge line. Turning call comes out from Jin. Senna gonna root everyone. Mumu Fiora finds the back line. Forky trying to make quick work of her. Able to kill Fiora. Nautilus very low. Step up, he is backing. And that's a three for one. In favor of Anarchy Blue. I mean, Anarchy Blue could look to start or at least threaten Baron here. Now, a bit too late. Full Sun Daily's uh, teleport is up. I'd like to see him transition into a split push into the bot lane. Really force uh, Kamikaze Penguin to either deal with him or, or to like give up the Baron. That's a great point. We do know do I? that Man's Defer cannot take on Full Sun Daily right now. They would have to send two.
the KO2 picking up the red buff, getting ready for the fight, no doubt to come for the Baron. Come the clearing out wards. The Umbral Glaive by by Senna is huge. Allows to clear a lot of vision. Yeah. Moving really together as a team. And through the vision, and the vision is back up. Curtain call comes out. There it is. Dredge land lands. Forky finding the back line. Able to take right down to half health. Amumu flash ultimate. It's a pretty good fight for the Kamikaze penguins. Amumu really turned the tide with that ultimate. Able to find Jane. One big chunk. Corky, fearless on his core, you're gonna run in. It's a big bomb, and it's enough. Here comes the Caitlyn. Would be able to kite. No, Shark Zulu healing is too much with the Ravenous Hydra. And they're looking straight for Baron. Amumu. Okay, gonna get healed by Santa. That did look in for a bit. It is not in play. Fiora, only one able to contest this. As Corky is just burning down the Baron. Mumu has to back out of the pit as Senna is looking for more. Did she bite off too much? No, she did not bite off too much. Able to get the Fiora, but Fiora did stop. Did not stop the Baron. The dredge line flash misses. And it might cost Nautilus his life. And it does. I'm looking to back. It's the third Infernal Drake, though. Not the worst compensation for a Baron. Putting True, a lot of pressure. given the Rise. scaling abilities of Rise and Jin. Corky deleting Rise. Very angry that they took the Dragon. A little payback coming. And Corky with a static shiv, actually. So not the fan of it. Jin looking to do some poke from the side, but really... Just not gonna do anything. We're near enough. Here they come Siege in the inhibitor tower. Here it goes in. Dive to the smite. I'm always gonna gain. And the penguins are knocking down the inhibitor with the Baron buff. Two down, three down on the uh, Anarchy blue side. Oh, and that's the game. Wow. Well played, Mike. Kamikaze Penguins. Great. Kamikaze Penguins knocking Anki Blue out of playoff contention. Keeping their 1 1 tradition alive. So yeah, crazy game. I did think Anarchy Blue, I, I thought Anarchy Blue had it when they got those two dragons, but, but no, Kamikaze Penguins really just sealed the deal at the end, able to clear a lot of vision and move as a team and get it done. So over to this damage, you see, Targeting Shaka Zulu was the answer. Able to shut him down. Put him on Fiora. And uh, take control of the lane on Swain. Yeah, the early triple kill really helped. Uh, oh, huge. Really helped um, Ace of really like, get ahead of Shaka Zulu and not allow him to snowball. Yeah, huge, huge play. Just yeah, kept him there. Wasn't able to, or Fiora wasn't able to bully him out of lane after that. 
Save it. Good game by both teams. One and one. I think you blew able to get their first win of the season with game one. We're not able to hang off to their playoff hopes. As a uh, as Kamikaze Penguins took game two. Right, and I'm unaware whether or not we'll be going to interviews or if this will just be it for the night. Uh, not too sure. Let's see. All right, and we Yes, that is me. Okay, okay. What's up? Always gonna game. Congrats Hello. on you guys win. Thank you. So, uh, want to go for game one first? What, uh, what stood out to you? Playing against Sejuani. Sejuani is not something you come across often in solo queue. Uh, I mean, I've played a lot of competitive League of Legends. I played in the meta that Sejuani dominated, so I was used to it. I was expecting it. Um, she ended up being way more impactful than I expected her to. Uh, but it's it's just a rough game overall. Okay. So playing towards top side, I noticed you started bot. What was the the plan there with the Tristana rather than going bot to um or I guess why start why start blue? Um the... well I wanted to uh try and get like somewhat pressure for our laner, just like our top laner out space being that he was into a previously diamond player. Um I just figured if you know top wasn't able to just snowball early if he had to at least respect people, then that maybe uh top could just farm it out we just get late game trist yeah that uh, then that's very true didn't end up working out like that and then in game two i mean brilliant strategy banning out shaka zulu definitely worked put him on fiora something he did not look like he had um, the same mastery as Gangplank on. And, uh, yeah, Ace of Able to hang in, bully him out of lane. Yeah, the, I mean, the three kills start definitely help there. Yeah, we, we were thinking the same thing. Huge help. Was able to just collect on that. Yeah, and on then a after that, by, um, top gets to just hang out and bully, and I can just focus everything towards bot and getting dragons. Yeah. Now, there was. Actually, I want to go to your big flash ultimate play. I mean, that was huge. Did you guys know you were gonna end off that? I mean, that pretty much sealed the deal. What was uh, what was the feeling like after that? After you guys won that team fight after losing, I think two in a row. Um, 
Well, really, we didn't know we were going to end until we were taking the inhib, and I was like, wait, I killed Fiora, we can go. And uh, we just kept pushing and realized that as long as uh, I got onto Rise and was able to ult him, we uh, couldn't lose the game there. So we just went for it. Yeah, that was great target selection. I mean, Man's Ferg, got him 50% first, and then Flash Ultimate, and, and yeah, that won the game. Yeah, my Amumu is my main, so whenever I get to play him, uh, things normally go really good for us. True. Well, yeah, they did go great there. But, uh... I don't know why he's not more meta, being that he gives literally anyone that can deal magic damage on his team true damage, and he has a huge impact ult. But, yeah, I'll just keep knowing that he's OP myself. Fair enough. A lot of Amumu fans, I think, in the SEAL community. Yeah, I've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> um, Season zero, Mumu was picked first picked on blue side uh, in all five games of the finals. Wow. Just wanna, <laughs> one sturdy guy. I myself am not the biggest Mumu fan. He's a he's a little weak early. I mean, but in these competitive games, it's huge. Yeah, I think he's only weak to uh, champions that can really force the fight early, things like Udyr and Master Yi. And even with them after 6, uh, at least with Master Yi, he can deal with them because Master Yi is really squishy. So something like Sejuani never really has the chance to bully an Amumu. Yeah. And that, those were the jungle picks, nothing uh, too early game bullyish coming out. Just uh, good ganks and solid team fight abilities oh, right. those games. Yep. Uh, no, 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 no. Cool. Well, yeah, thank you. Always gonna game. Congrats on your guys' win. Thank you. For being here for the interview. And to everyone that watched the Piltover um, games today, Kamikaze Penguins and Anarchy Blue, each won one, each lost one. And I uh, hope you guys tune in to the next, next stream.